Sometimes I go about in pity for myself. And all the while, the great wind carries me across the sky. Oh, gee, we say. Who put this up? I compare the brain to a magpie. One of these birds that plucks a twig here and a piece of string here, but also more unusual things. I mean, the catalog of things that magpies have incorporated into their nests is amazing. The brain evolved in particular settings, you know, mostly outside. It evolved to do things like sense and move the body, to find its way through three-dimensional landscapes, to engage in encounters in, in small groups of people. These are the things that the brain does effortlessly, naturally. The brain is not a computer, it never was, and it has to be understood on its own terms. As we go through our everyday lives, there's way more information than we can process or retain consciously. It would, it would just completely explode our mental bandwidth, but we are taking in that information, noting regularities and patterns, and storing them in the non-conscious mind. The point is that magpies build their nests from whatever is available in their immediate environment, and that the brain is something like that. It's assembling its thought processes from what's available in its environment, and that means that thinking better is not about working the brain ever harder, it's about creating a space and a set of capacities wherein you have more and better resources from which to assemble your thought processes. I want to point to something that I think about a lot said by Andy Clark. And Andy Clark is the um, philosopher who originated the idea of, of the extended mind. And he talks about how we are intrinsically loopy creatures. We're loopy. Computers work in this very linear fashion. It's like input, output, you know, it's all a straight line. But humans, because of the way our brain evolved, we benefit from looping information and knowledge and ideas in and out of these different domains. You know, bringing in the contribution of our body or passing it through the brains of other people or experiencing and thinking about our ideas in a new setting, a new physical setting. So when we think of ourselves as loopy creatures, we can kind of create those loops where we're passing information and ideas in and out of these different domains, the body, spaces, other people's minds, and then back through our own heads. And that's a much more fertile and generative way of dealing with information than just always keeping it inside our own heads, where it's not going to be changed or altered or improved in any way. Another factor in our culture that we haven't mentioned yet are ideas from popular psychology like grit and the growth mindset, both of which have at their core another metaphor, not the metaphor of brain as computer, but the metaphor of brain as muscle. People start thinking the brain actually is a muscle, which of course it isn't. And even as a metaphor, it's very powerful because there are all these assumptions embedded in it that lead us to think, oh, if the brain's a muscle, then the more I work it, the more tirelessly and exhaustively I work this muscle, the stronger it gets and the better I'll be able to think. If we think of the brain not as a workhorse, but as a magpie, then we see the brain playing this role of bringing in this resource here and bringing in that resource now and, and knowing in a skillful way which resources to use and when. And that's the kind of intellectual facility that we should be developing, I think, in our students and in ourselves.